Good morning. It's another live with the Jesus chick on a not another manic Monday. I want to always want to say another manic Monday because that song's embedded in my brain from the 70s. But this is not another manic Monday, even though I just got home from cardiac rehab. So uh, messy hair, don't care. Actually, I do care, but I don't have time to care. So. We'll wait till a few people get online. Good morning. Hey, Karen Meadows, I'll wave at you. All right, so this morning, um, the song I'm going to do for you is called I'll Tell You Just Where I Stand. And um, it came, This I wrote this song many many months ago uh, long before the heart attack but um, it's humbling to know hey glow baby it's humbling to see how the Lord has uh, allowed me to serve him and um, hey, Amy Blake and be used by him and so it, it is I love humble people, and I hope that I've always had a humble attitude. But there's some, but I'm human, and there's, so there's times that I have a prideful attitude too. But I don't ever want to forget, you know, what a price Jesus Christ paid, uh, so that I could have the opportunity to serve Him. And so this morning I want to start out with this song, and then we're going to do uh, just a very short Bible study on um, humbleness, and uh, out of the book of Luke, chapter nine. Well, it's actually out of Luke in. Uh, first Peter but um, let's start out with a song hope you enjoy it oh Lord you know my heart you know that I am filled with sin I'd like to say that it's not my fault but that's not a battle I could win it may have begun in the garden underneath she may even tell you how the devil did to see. I had a problem, but Jesus had a plan. So I'll not play games, I'll tell you. This is where I stand, I stand on the rock. Christ my Lord, He saved my soul. My sin He bore. He saved my soul. Inside the church And every soul Outside the door Is filled with one Excuse or another On why they fail the Lord It may have begun In the garden Underneath the tree with thee She may even tell you How the devil did the sea and I both know how very weak we are So I'll not play games Thanks for saving me from that fire I stand on the rock Of Christ my Lord He saved my soul My city boy He saved my soul My city boy But it may have been Satan Who started the fall but it ended at the cross when Jesus died to save us all. I stand on the rock. Christ my Lord, He saved my soul. My sin He bore. He saved my soul. My sin He bore. He saved my soul. My sin He bore. Hey, good morning, Kevin Church. And... Diane Kruger from Minnesota. Love you guys and thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's a blessing to be here this morning and just to be able to share this Bible study with you. It's a very, it'll probably be a very short Bible study. I need to move my computer back. Looks like I'm cutting my head off. Some people would like to cut my head off sometimes, but um, hopefully not you guys. Um, so we're going to start out in the book of Luke. Uh, chapter 18 verses 9 through 13 and um, it's Jesus talking and he spake a parable unto certain which he trusted in themselves which 
unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, and I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast, and saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. And, um, boy, <laughs> I, like I said, I'm human, so I'm sure there are times that I'm not as humble as I should be. But I, I can certainly more identify with um, the, the publican than I can the Pharisee. Um, I can't stand religion. You know, religion drives people away from the gospel because it it puts it always seems to put works in there, even if that's not what their intent is. It puts you know, the, you know as long as you show up for church on Sunday morning, as uh, long as you do what the preacher says, as long as you wear the right collar shirt and the right length skirt and all that, then then you're okay with God. Well, that's not what it's about. Being being uh, right with God is about your relationship with Jesus, and that is entirely personal. And um, you know, so I want to be I want to be somebody that's approachable. And I don't think religious people are approachable. You know, they always they always have an attitude of of arrogance about them that kills me and it breaks my heart because Jesus was not arrogant. You know, I mean, who had the right to be? You know, he created the earth and he certainly had the right to be to be arrogant, but he wasn't. He all Jesus wanted to do was love on people, and you know, that's what we should do. All we should want to do is love on people and show people um, the side of Christ that that He showed to us, which was mercy and grace. And sometimes we forget that. But I understand how important it is to stay humble. In First Peter five, um, verses five through six. Get my pages to turn here. It says this, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Praise God for that. Uh, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So, are we a humble people? You know, we have to ask ourselves that today. Are people able to approach us? Do they see the love of Jesus Christ in us, or do they see um, pride within us. Uh, we are. Uh, Peter said we that they were subject one to another, and that's tough because, you know, we all want to be the boss in life, or at least I do. Uh, we all want to have the greater say, but Jesus, you know, he humbled himself on the cross. I, I know in my heart that he would have not, he would have rather not been on the cross when he was hanging there with the nails in his hand, but he chose to do that. He chose to humble himself and stay there. Um, no, no matter what people think, um, we need to understand that hum that we should be humble, even if um, you know, people are treating us like dirt, which is, <laughs> you know, that happens sometimes. But it's our job as a child of God to play the part of Jesus. So, you know, the the people um, that were standing around mocking Jesus on the cross, how, you know, and, and railing on him, spitting on him, beating him. Uh, and Jesus yet still, he hung there on the cross with this, with this attitude of humility and he was God. So that should be when we talk about our, the way that we start our week, a humble attitude should be how we start our week. You know, that we, we, sh we are just blessed. We are a blessed people. Christians forget that, you know, we get so distracted by life. We get so burdened down with life and, and we forget, you know, how blessed we are to be children of God, what the privileges are. If we just start counting up the privileges of what it means to be a child of God, glory to God, you know, we have we have a great week ahead of us because all of our all of our promises, you know, God that God has laid out before us, He's got our week taken care of. We don't have to stress it. Um, one of my favorite preachers of all time, uh, you know, he was known around the world before Facebook even <laughs> came into existence. Before there was even you know any kind of social media, there was media by means of newspapers and that kind of thing. But Charles Spurgeon, uh, he. He was known all around the world, and I love, if you get a chance to read any of his works, you'll see what an amazing man he was, and probably a lot of you have already read some of his works. But even he needed the occasional lesson in humility. It says that Charles Spurgeon and Joseph Parker, uh, they were they both had churches in London in the 19th century, and um, 
On one occasion, Parker commented on the poor condition of the children admitted to Spurgeon's orphanage. But like so many times, people will take a story and they'll twist it a little bit. Um, and that's exactly what happened. They took uh, Preacher P Parker's story and they went and told Spurgeon that he was bad ta he was bad mouthing the orphanage. Well, Spurgeon wasn't going to have that. So the next Sunday, he got up and he just ra he just railed on Parker in his sermon on the next Sunday. And and he really gave he really gave him down the road from the pulpit for his attack on his orphanage. Well, it turns out that he did find out the difference, but before he did the next Sunday, that same bunch of people went to preacher Parker and said, you know, Spurgeon just, he just tore you apart in his pulpit last Sunday. And he said, well, let's show him, let's take up an offering for his, for his orphanage. And they took up this huge offering and said it took, uh, they had to empty the, they had to empty the uh, offering plates three times for the amount of money that they took up for Spurgeon's, uh, for Spurgeon's or orphanage. You know, what a wonderful attitude of humility that uh, Parker had. And Spurgeon came to him today or, or later in the day and he said that, um, he said the crowd was delighted and the ushers had to empty the collection plates three times. Later that week, there was a knock on Parker's study door. It was Spurgeon. He said, you know, Parker, you have practiced grace on me. You have given me, you have given me not what I deserved. You have given me what I needed. And for me, that's, boy, what a lesson that was. How many times have I wanted vengeance? And, and the Bible clearly says that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, not ours. But you know, Spurgeon, he got his vengeance but it wasn't even, the guy didn't even deserve it. And even though he didn't deserve it, he was still kind back to Spurgeon. He still respected the office of preacher. And that's another thing we need to remember, that the office of, of pastor and preacher is an important role and we should respect it. But that's an amazing story. And are we prepared to be that humble if somebody hurts us this week? Uh, are we prepared to be that humble this Monday morning? So are you wearing humble pants? Peter said to be clothed in humility, liter literally putting on humbleness like you put on your clothing to get ready for for work or school or wherever you're going. You know, um, there was, whenever I was in, in uh, Minnesota, there was a story that Nita Killebrew told. And Nita Killebrew is the wife of uh, Harmon Killebrew, who was a Minnesota Twins, and he's in the Hall of Fame. And uh, she said that every morning, Harmon would get up, and he would put on his pants, and he would pat his right pocket for his money clip, and he would pat his left pocket for his car keys, and he would pat his back pocket for his wallet, and he would pat his other back pocket that was empty. And she asked him one time, she said, why do you pat that empty back pocket? And he said, I want to make sure that my ego is not in there. And isn't that a great lesson that we need to remember not to take our ego out with us when we go out? We shouldn't, have, we, when we go out into public or any, or even in the home, we should make sure that, you know, we have this humble attitude. It's easy to put others, put ourselves before others uh, because we're born with that nature. You know, we're born with this selfish nature. Being humble takes effort, but there's a great purpose in it. Um, you know, I always think that I'm a very humble person until I did this study and then I began to examine my life and I see a lot of arrogance in my life that shouldn't be there. And that's what happens when you read the Bible is it's a mirror. It really, I mean, it looks down deep in your soul and shows you things that you didn't even know existed. And so I see that I have a lot of pride and, uh, I need more humility, more humbleness in my life. Uh, my ego is right there. It's in my pocket and I need to take it out and make sure that, uh, I'm not carrying around. Around my ego that I'm thinking of others first. I need to take time for the little people, but when in actuality I am the little person. And I need to remember that, that in the eyes of God, you know, yes, I'm equal with everybody else, but I'm no greater than anybody else. And so I need to remember that, that there is a humble purpose. Peter told the congregation, he said, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt you in due time. Isn't that awesome? To humble ourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. How awesome is it that as children of God, God has his hand on us. He has his hand on us directly our lives, um, showing us the way that we should go. We have to listen, but, you know, under the mighty hand of God, once you get there, you will understand humility. When you feel the hand of God upon you and, uh, you know, he has a purpose for every single one of us. The publican knew that when he, that the publican knew that when he looked down on, when he was looked down on by the Pharisees, let me get my tongue untied here. Um, 
all of us have been looked down on by people. I mean, that's a, that's a hard pill to swallow sometimes. But um, his humility, the, the, his humility, the humility of the publican, not the Pharisee. Well, the Pharisee got mentioned in the Bible too, but not in favorable light. But that, the, but that publican who was a sinner, and he knew he was a sinner. Here we are. You know, thousands of years later, we're still telling the same story. We don't know his name, but God knows his name. And uh, that's, you know, God mentioned him in the Bible. What an awesome tribute to this man. And God remembered him and, and put him in the Bible, put him in the word of God so that we could use him as an illustration and show us that God knows us too. He sees what we do. Peter said, Peter said that uh, that we might be exalted in due time, whether it's here or it's in heaven. God will make sure that that you know that He knows. Um, that's reward enough. When you think about the Creator of all the earth taking note of what you did today, when you were kind to somebody, when you showed favor to somebody, when you encouraged somebody. Uh, God, he, took, he takes note of that. He takes note when we take care of each other. And that's what the church should be all about. It shouldn't make any difference what's over the door. But if you know somebody that's struggling in another church or in your own church, you, and you have the means to take care of them, you should by all means do that. And I'm guilty, I'm guilty a lot of times of not doing as much as I could. Um, I'm, we're having a ladies' night out at our church this evening uh, for all the, the Christian women in our community. And uh, one of the ladies in our church, uh, I needed uh, honey as an illustration. I knew that she was a beekeeper. And um, they have those little honey sticks. And I wanted those as an illustration for my lesson this evening uh, because I'm teaching on Deborah. And you know, all I had to do was mention it to her, mention it to her. And Sunday morning, she came with a whole handful of those little honey sticks for me just because she loves me. You know, she didn't expect anything in return, but what a blessing to have a lady in the church who thought enough of me where all I had to do was mention something I needed. And lo and behold, there it came, you know, God provided through her and what a blessing. And God's going to take note of Miss Margaret it's a, what gift to me and I believe that I believe that he's going to take note this afternoon as I'm down at the nursing home and I'm singing and, and ministering to those folks I believe that God is going to take notice of that and I don't say that to puff myself up because I'm not they bless me far more than I bless them but it's just to say that we're all given an opportunity to serve someplace today whether it's with your co-workers whether it's with your family you know you get the opportunity to speak to somebody's heart and encourage them a young preacher once approached Dr. F.B. Meyer and asked how he could one day become as influential and well-known as Dr. Meyer. And Dr. Meyer responded, Don't waste your time waiting and longing for large opportunities, which may never come, but faithfully handle the little things that are always claiming your attention. Praise God for that. You know, it's the little things in life. I, whenever God told me to do this um, this video blog on Monday mornings and I thought God I don't see how on earth that you know I'm going to make any difference but every week is just such a blessing to, to talk to you and to see you know that maybe I have encouraged somebody in their day um, today's a new day and it's a new week and even the great Charles Spurgeon needed a lesson in humility and I certainly needed a lesson in humility that um, you know <laughs> I need to humble myself down and remember that you know, no, I'm not better than anybody else, but I'm not any less than anybody else. And that God has a purpose for me in, in my life. He also has a purpose for you. I hope that this message has encouraged you today. I love each one of you. And I'm so grateful for how you encourage me and come online and, and listen to me sing and, and rattle on and sometimes mess up scripture and sometimes get my tongue tied around my teeth. But I'm just grateful for each one of you. I love you and I hope you have a blessed week. And um, I hope to see you next Monday as well. God bless you all.